If you'll allow me, I would like to share a letter with you that I received from a wonderful lady. She had prayed for a miracle in her life, and she was experiencing days where she really got down. She wasn't sure if she could cope anymore with her life. Here's what she said. I feel that my husband and I have made wonderful progress in the last few weeks. My greatest progress dates from the night when you told me that every day is a good day if you pray. I began to put into practice the idea that affirming that this would be a good day the moment I woke up in the morning, and she said, as I started to do this, I can positively say that I haven't had a bad or an upsetting day since that time. The amazing thing is that my days haven't been any smoother or any more free from petty annoyances than they ever were. They just don't seem to have the power to upset me anymore. I've come to realize that the change occurred within me. The more that I didn't look to events outside of myself to make me happy or unhappy. Every night I began my prayers, she said, by listing all the things that I'm grateful for in my gratitude to God calendar system. And I added all the things that happened during that day, and it added to my happiness. I know that this habit has geared my mind to pick out the nice things and forget the unpleasant ones. The fact is that for six weeks I have not had a single bad day and have refused to get downhearted with anyone is simply marvelous to me. Now, this lady had a spiritual experience, and I pray that you have one too. I'm going to share with you today ten rules for a spiritual prayer life. Number one, set aside a few moments every day. Don't say anything. Simply think about God. Before you were thinking about your problems and all the things that were making you tight inside and angry and nervous, now, instead, you're relaxing and you're thinking about God. This is the golden key that author Emmett Fox wrote about in his book, The Golden Key. You think about God instead of the problem. When you think about God, everything begins to change in a miraculous and wondrous way, and this will make your mind spiritually receptive. Number two, pray using simple, natural words. Tell God anything that's on your mind. Don't think that you have to use stereotype pious phrases. Talk to God in your own language because God understands. In the past decades, I've been surprised how many people have come to me and said, I don't know how to pray to God. And I would ask them, do you have a best friend? What makes your best friend your best friend? And after talking a moment, they usually say, well, I can talk easily with my best friend. And I would tell them, God is your best friend. You can easily talk to God. And they say many times, I wouldn't know what to say. And then they look at me and they say, you pray for me because I don't know how to talk to God. And I would say, just talk. Take a walk with God out in the woods. Take a drive with God in your car. Work with God at your desk and simply talk to God as you would a best friend. You say something like, dear God, you're my best friend in the world. And I'm feeling a little nervous right now and I have a headache. Will you please heal me? The words don't matter. God understands. And you know that. And when you feel that inside, you have real fresh prayer in your life. It's not stale anymore. God understands. Number three, pray as you go about the business of your day. 
often you will say to yourself, well, I just don't have time to pray. I wish I did, but I have to do this and I have to do that. If only I had the time, the luxury to sit down and enjoy God. Well, you have one minute of time, don't you? See, prayer is the language of spirit. It bypasses time and space. One minute with God is tremendously healing. You can take one minute breaks many times during your day. You'll be surprised at how refreshed you feel and what these one minute prayers will do in your life. You'll be surprised at how near you feel to God's presence. When you're really wanting to get in touch with God, here's what I suggest you do. You time tithe. This is where you give 10% back to God. You take your whole week and dedicate yourself to God by giving six minutes back out of every hour, tithing. At the end of the week, you will feel like you have been on a spiritual retreat. You've still dealt with everything that happened during the week, but you have dealt with it much better. In Acts 6.4, it says, While we, for our part, will devote ourselves to prayer and serving the Word. You're a partner with God. But what is your part in the partnership? It is to take time and to consent. You have the inspiration of God come to you and through you. It is to devote yourself to the word that comes to you. Your whole day is going to receive a refreshing spiritual breeze when you do this. Number four, do not always ask when you pray, but instead positively affirm that God's blessings are now being given and spend most of the time giving thanks. Know that you're right now being showered with God's blessings where you are. You are immersed in the good of God as much as a fish is immersed with water in a tank of water. It is in you, it's around you, so much so that you can't see it, but my friend, you can feel it. You can totally sense it when you consent to it in your mind, and when you do, your whole day is transformed. Number five, pray with belief and faith. So often we get wordy in our prayers, but we really don't believe what we're praying can possibly come to pass. I want to share a wonderful story with you. A man was flying on an airplane after America's first commercial jet service began with the flight of the Boeing 707. This man was a traveler on a piston engine, propeller-driven DC-6 airplane. Well, he struck up a conversation with a fellow passenger. The passenger happened to be a Boeing engineer. The traveler asked the engineer about the new jet aircraft. The engineer was so enthusiastic about the new development in aviation he began to speak at length about the extensive testing Boeing had done on the jet engine before bringing it into commercial service. He recounted Boeing's experience with engines from B-17 to the B-52. When his traveling companion asked him if he himself had flown in the new 707 jetliner, the engineer replied, I think I'll wait until it's been in service for a while. <laughs> it's one thing to talk enthusiastically. It's another to put your life on the line. When I pray, I put my life on the line, and I ask you to also. I pray for God's way, not Chris's way. Jesus talks about putting your life on the line from going from where you are in seeming mediocrity to be on the line of excitement and answered prayer. That's putting your life on the line of God. It's going from the average to the supreme.
It's going from the mundane to unbelievable good beyond even that which you can imagine. That is the good of God, and it is the message of Jesus Christ. In Mark 11, 23 and 24, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, if you say to this mountain, Be taken up and thrown into the sea, and if you do not doubt in your heart, but believe what you say will come to pass, it will be done for you. So, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you will receive it, and it will be yours. Number six, never use a negative thought in prayer. Only positive thoughts get positive results. In the past, I've heard people who pray, oh dear God, these people did this to me, get them. Remember, prayer comes through you. It has a boomerang effect. It comes back to you. Always pray for good in a positive spiritual way. It will come through you first, shower down immediately upon your life. Number seven, always express willingness to accept God's will. Ask for what you want, but be willing to take what God gives you. It's always better than what you've asked for. I want to share something with you from Walter Anderson's book, The Greatest Risk of All. He makes this significant statement. Be assured, it is not possible for human beings to be empty vessels. No person that's ever lived has been an unbeliever despite what they may argue. Everyone believes in something. It might be God or not God. Manifest greed for money or power, a career or a friend, science, a principle, something. Whatever it is we place before our lives is what we turn toward. Well, today, my friend, I'm asking you to believe in God and turn towards God. That is the meaning of the word repent. It means to turn around from the way we're going, or thinking in the moment, and to rise up higher, to think higher, God-inspired thoughts. Pray at the beginning of your week, instead of being so twisted up on Monday morning thinking about the week ahead of you and the worries in the future. Be prepared. Be pre prayed. Turn to God and say, God, I know your will for me is absolute wondrous good. Don't just say the words, but totally know and believe it without a doubt. Life is so sweet. It's a huge error for something else, some other opinion of life to rob you of that spiritual sweetness. Life is a joy. Every moment is a joy beyond belief. Put God first. Think about God first in every aspect of your life. Number eight. Practice putting everything in God's hands. I used to have a sign on my desk that said, Pew. That's P-E-I-G-H. Everybody that came into my office would ask, What does that sign mean? It means put everything in God's hands. We don't often do this. We give a little bit to God, but we keep a whole lot ourselves. We need to release, to unwind, to put it all in God's hands. Number nine, pray for people that you do not like. When we don't like a person, it is as if we have cataracts over our eyes. We can't see that person as he or she really is. If we knew that person, we would have compassion, maybe over time, love for that person. You're probably thinking, yes, but you don't know the person like I do. I know God, and I know God's love can come through you. Start praying for that person 
and soon you'll fall in like with that person. It may take a while, but do it. Pray for the people you don't like. Resentment is the number one blockade to personal spiritual power. In Mark 11, 25, Jesus says, Whenever you stand praying, forgive. If you have something against anyone, so that your Father in heaven may forgive your trespasses. Also make a list of people that you want to pray for. You may be surprised, but it does more for you than it does for the people you're praying for. It's a joy because it comes through you. You're like a pipe, and all this good of God flows through, and it saturates the pipe. Number 10, ask God to use you. Say in prayer, God, use me. There's a beautiful Christian hymn called Spirit of the Living God Fall Fresh on Me. In the original version of the song, the middle line read, Melt me, mold me, break me, fill me. And then someone with spiritual insight saw that there was something lacking in the chorus and change the line to this. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. This person was right. The filling is not an end of itself, but a means of action. We have to take all the good that God gives us and then give it away. And in this way, we will always have more. It's never depleted. It's never stale. It's always new. It's always fresh and filled with spiritual vitality.